A very good evening, everybody. Welcome to the webinar, How to Create a Trading Plan for U.S. Indices. I'm Minghui from Philip Futures, and this is the second part of the two-part webinar series held in collaboration with CME Group. Speaking to us today will be Mr. Wong Kon Hao. He is an investment and trading strategist with more than 20 years of experience in the finance industry. In tonight's webinar, Kon Hao will continue sharing his knowledge of the U.S. indices. And before I pass this on to him, I'd just like to inform you that if you have any questions throughout the course of the webinar, please feel free to drop them into the questions box as we will have a live Q&A session towards the end. And now without further ado, let's have Kon Hao speak to us. Okay, thank you, Min Hui. And uh, I also want to thank you, my sponsor, uh, Chicago Mercantile uh, Exchange Group, that sponsored this event on how to create a trading plan for U.S. indices. And of course, I want to thank you, uh, Philip Fugis, for having us. And also, more importantly, the uh, audience tonight that you tune in at 7. Now, uh, the first part we share about the trading profile, uh, how to plan, how to equate trading profile. It seems like a very basic fundamental question, but it is very important. So tonight, I'm going to give you a very short recap on the trading profile along the way, but tonight we're going to zoom into how to plan for a trade, especially in these two areas about short-term trading and as well as intraday trading. So you're going to learn this too, how to plan, how to spot for opportunity, a trade. Now I'm just going to move on very quickly into the uh, topic tonight. Uh, but before I share, I just want to share a little bit about myself uh, in the industry unknowingly for about 25 years. I thought that's still 20, 20 years, but it's really 25 years. So anyway, um, the last eight years, I uh, took a, I would say took a break, but I stepped away from the corporate and uh, being a self-employed as well. Uh, it was, uh, that was 2000, after 2008, the Lehman crisis, I continued to stay in the, in this marketplace uh, for about the next four years. And then after that, the, uh, it got me really busy because of all the paperwork, uh, all this and that. But my love is really to analyze the market. And in 2013, I took uh, away from the corporate uh, uh, stage and I, I just stepped back and I invest and trade with my own uh, fund. And in the same time, uh, it was also quite a privilege that uh, different exchanges that also invited me to uh, design programs for them. Uh, who are they? SGX and as well as a CME group as well. So it's really a privilege to be here tonight. And what, so what do I specialize in? In uh, the area of behavioral analysis. Now what's behavioral analysis is called basically market psychology. So uh, over the last few years, the latest uh, portfolio I have is also to help the lawyers to write forensic report to study into the prices. And tonight you'll see that and um, write reports whenever there's trading dispute. And then of course it's for the judge to decide who is the, can claim the case. So that's the latest uh, uh, update that I have. I'm just going to zoom down to the uh, topic very soon. And before that, very important disclaimer. So now uh, what I'm going to share with you tonight is uh, really how to identify opportunity between short-term trading and as well as intraday trading. How to plan for, for, for it, how to identify it, waiting for the opportunity to come and how to take advantage of it. Um, okay, so later on, I hope that uh, the rest of the 15 minutes that we have, that means I'm going to uh, present to you my case until about 7.45, about 45 minutes then. I hope that the next 15 minutes, the last 15 minutes that we have, that I'm going to take on some question. And if possible, I will also showcase some of the uh, current market chart to uh, give you some practical exercise as well, so that I hope that you can apply what you've learned tonight uh, to work. Uh, once you get started in trading, or if you are already trading, I hope that, that it will be a blessing to you uh, with my sharing tonight. So, well, as, as I'm going to share the uh, current market and about my view as well, you have to understand that all these views are uh, my personal view is not of the view from the organizer. And all these views are for my personal consumption. So if you are somewhat influenced by my thoughts tonight, uh, you're going to take action right away or tomorrow or next month. You think you think you thought about what I've delivered and inspire you want to take action is really at your own accord. And please also consult your financial broker as well. So uh, part one, we, um, we, we, we discuss about uh, profiling. Profiling means that before, now most of the traders or investors feel I have uh, come to a conclusion that's because they failed to plan. They do not know exactly who they are. So we study into the nature of the human nature, the very human nature about most of the traders or investors 
uh, honestly, after so many years, I I realized that uh, there's a there's a there's a survey being done that most of them love short term trade, but most of them ended up with long term position that is not uh, carrying all these losses. Why is it so? Because deep down in most of the human nature that we want quick bucks, so that became a problem. Now, in part one, we describe about the uh, trading profile. It seems like a very basic topic, but it's one of the most fundamental. Uh, that's my belief that everyone should know about before they start engaged in the trade. Exactly, you have to define and you have to know how are you going to hold this position? Is it going to be a long-term investing, short-term investing, short-term trading, or for intraday trading? So you have to know even before you trigger that trade. So that's what we discussed about it in part one. And I think it's being recorded. You can go to the uh, uh, platform to view it. So tonight we're going to touch on part two right now. Okay, now part two, I'm going to go straight to the trading strategy about the managing risk. I think I'll leave it to the Q&A time that we have. Then uh, I will be able to look at some of the most current market that we can talk about it, how to manage risk as well. So I'm just going to jump straight to the uh, trading strategy where I'm going to describe to you, to share with you how to plan for a trade, identify for a trade between short-term trading and intraday trading as well. Now, just to give a note to uh, thank to our, our sponsor, which is uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange Group. Um, just want to showcase some, some of these four slides that they have. So about two years ago, they launched this uh, micro e-mini index, US index futures. I think it's so timely because as the price uh, escalate, things are getting really expensive in terms of the uh, notional value of every in US indices. So I'm glad that whoever have come up with this idea back in CME group, they, they are, he is such a visionary or she is such a visionary. And basically this micro e mini futures, it just um, shave off the size, the quantum of every uh, e mini index futures. Now you can see that since after it launched about two years ago, uh, volume have picked up tremendously over the years. And especially at a time of very uncertainty that was during the pandemic last year in 2020, the volume even more have picked up tremendously. So basically, they have launched the micro e-mini index futures. Uh, now, retail investors could trade into the Russell, NASDAQ, Dow Jones, and S&P as well. Okay, so later I can explain to you very quickly. And this is a, a comparison between the uh, uh, mini S&P and micro mini uh, index, sorry, micro mini index. So the blue one is the uh, e-mini index and the gray is the micro index futures. So now I can see that the volume have uh, picked up tremendously over the past few months, um, which is this is a measure of the open interest. Now open interest to me is very important for me to qualify whether this contract is tradable for me as a trader or not. Now, why is it open interest is important? Because more than open interest measured those positions that hold overnight and more than two days, it, it captured that. So it's very meaningful to me because it means that the uh, participants uh, take ownership of the contract and decided to hold overnight. So it's a good measurement, good gauge to me whether this instrument is of a certain quality or not. So uh, you can see that in gray, the micro e mini S, uh, micro e mini US index has been growing from strength to strength. So it's a very clear indication to me that this contract, it is good. Now, how to qualify whether this instrument is tradable? Being a short-term trader and intraday trader, there's two things I look out for. Number one is liquidity, which is open interest, as you could see, is growing from strength to strength over the month. The number two thing that I look out for is volatility. Now, it's different from investor though. Now, trader, two things I need from the market, is volatility and liquidity. It must have these two elements before I qualify the contract, whether it's it tradable or not. So what I'm going to share with you this skill tonight is really from the last 25 years. And you could apply it in any market. Okay, You could apply it in any market. But let me just get tonight. The example I'm going to showcase is all the US indices. Now, uh, about the micro e-mini index futures, uh, something that I think being an Asian, Asia, um, Asian, I'm quite proud of. Uh, you could see that Asia Pacific, uh, since the launch until today, about two years by now, um, the market share that the retail investor or the uh, traders that trade this micro e-mini index futures have been growing as well. 
we are capturing bigger pie of the whole market. So, which I'm quite proud, and that was a time that I also start partnering with CME Group as well. Uh, I'm not claiming any credit here, but I'm just being honored to be able to, to be part of this group. And about a year ago, no less than a year ago, but in August last year, they also launched because of the success of the micro e-mini index futures, the US futures, they also launched the micro e-mini options. So now uh, you find the market is extremely volatile, uh, but yet you have a view on the major direction. Maybe you can consider micro e-mini option, and that's how I use option. Now, different traders will use different set of instruments differently. Uh, for me, I always prefer the outrights. When I say outrights, I'm referring to micro e-mini US index futures. That's called outrights. Uh, but how I apply option is that uh, when market is really uncertain, very volatile, but yet I have a view, but it's extremely volatile, but yet I have a view, I may consider to deploy the options. That's how I use options. Okay, well, good. And uh, I'm just going to go straight to the topic tonight about trading strategies between short-term trading and intraday trading. But before that, let me also define to you uh, what uh, I'm expert in, in behavioral analysis. And what exactly is behavioral analysis? Okay, so now um, being a trader compared to investor, now being an investor, I need three things from the market. I need the charts to tell me where we are today. I also need the behavior analysis, which I'm gonna to describe to you shortly. But being an investor, I also need the third thing, which is I need a fundamental analysis. But tonight, I'm not covering the investment portion, so I will go straight to the trading portion. Now, being a trader, now all of you, I just assume that 110 of us, we're all traders. Just assume that we're all traders. There's two things I need to help me to analyze the market. Not so much on fundamental analysis anymore. I Two things that I need is technical analysis and behavioral analysis to help me to formulate trading ideas. Now, what is technical analysis? Basically, it tells us where we are right now. Okay, As we look at a chart, this is a, a NASDAQ. So basically, it's telling me right now today, as I checked before, the, the webinar, the NASDAQ currently is about 13,300. Where this slide, I prepared, prepared this on the 31st of March. Now, it basically tells me where we are today. And if you look at the time frame over the last 20 years, this is where we are today, 13,300. So it's around the high. So chart tell us around the high. And I felt that if uh, most of the traders just apply chart uh, mechanically, I think that's not my idea tonight. So I'm going to introduce you to behavior analysis as well. Now, so most of the charts will do this. They are quite mechanical. And I felt that uh, I, I personally termed that as term them as a zombie trader. Zombie trader, what do you mean by zombie trader? It means that they literally uh, follow the uh, uh, charting or what the book says that uh, if the indicator points above 100 and cross down, it cross down the cell. So it's very mechanical. And it's below about 30 points or it's about zero. When they start to cross up, it's time to buy. So they follow very faithfully or whatever golden cross or they may have no, or they just follow very blindly. If, or they say that when there's a hammer, you should buy into it. So they just follow it very faithfully, but also very blindly. But let me just introduce you to behavior analysis. Of course, I believe and I use technical analysis very, very intensively, but I cannot do it without behavior analysis. Okay? Technical analysis, being a trader is important. For those that just join us, just join us. Uh, being a trader, I need two things to analyze, to help me to analyze the market. Number one is technical analysis. Number two is behavioral analysis. Now, what is behavioral analysis in the layman term is called market psychology. Now, basically, once you include behavioral analysis to technical analysis, it tells us why it moves as such. It tells us why it moves as such. We study into the market behavior. We need to know why the market moved that way. We need to know that. Okay, let me just give you an example. And if you could combine the two together, TA plus BA, it became a precision trading. It, it, to me, it's a very powerful uh, analytical tool, uh, not a system. The system is in our mind. Okay, so tonight, I'm going to train all of you how to apply our mind, the brain that we have. It's not a system. It is Our system is the mind. Okay? Now, uh, of course, for precision investing, then I will include uh, FA, fundamental analysis as well. Okay, let's just zoom down into trading. 
just apply technical analysis and behavioral analysis. Yes, it's true that sometimes as a short-term trader, I do not really consider all this fundamental analysis. I will just zoom into the price data analysis, which is technical and BA. Now, uh, let me just introduce one of the uh, very interesting uh, indices that I have I bought. Now, every week I will I bought the weekly chart or monthly chart uh, of every market to source for opportunity. Now, what is Russell? So basically, the in US there's four major indices, but Russia, Russell. Okay, Russell is the least heard of. So we know about Nasdaq, we know about S and P, we know about Dow Jones. How about Russell? Okay, Russell two thousand it basically measure two thousand smaller US listed companies in the US market, the smaller size one. How small are they? Basically, I just did research this afternoon. It's between the size of three billion and below. Between 100 million, the market cap to about 3 billion. But if I'm going to add, add up all these 2,000 companies, a smaller size listed company in US, it's still going to worth about a few trillion US dollars. So, Russell to me is also a very important indicator of the whole market. Now, sometimes if I may not have an idea about NASDAQ, SP, or Dow Jones, I may just play around with Russell to get some idea. So, tonight, I'm just going to introduce how to use TA and BA to form some ideas. And now, so basically is this, uh, you could see that Russell, so it's very important because this 2000 company also employ the, uh, a huge, large working force in the market. Okay? So most of the US company, we know about Google, Apple, we know about the big names, but the 2000 companies is of a large market, market cap as well. It's worth about a few trillion US dollars. So we should not ignore this uh, 2000 companies as well. Now. What we see here is that we could see that over the last this year onwards, today is already April, a uh, quarter have passed. We could see that the Russell 2000, it has grown from strength to strength. We could see that the, it peaked. Uh, by now, it's, it, we saw there's three peaks, right? But most of the technician, they use it very mechanically is that they saw that, oh, this is called a divergence. So basically, what indicator am I using right now? The below, it represents the MACD. So basically, this is how we spot for market weakness is that when the price is moving up, but the indicator is pointing downwards. Now, most of the charters recognize that it's a divergence. They say it's time to sell. Now, let me just include behavioral analysis to this understanding. Now, what does it mean? It means that, remember TA, it means it tell us where we are today. But BA, it tell us why that's happening. Now, now what is indicator? Whether you're using RSI, MACD or whatever indicator. So, so to me, indicator, I use it as it measure the strength of the prices. Let me just repeat that if you miss it. Okay. Now, for me, how I use indicator is that it measures the strength of the prices. Now, let me just explain to you how I analyze the market for Russell 2000. Now, as the price hit a new peak each time since the beginning of 2021, now, since the indicator measure the strength of the price, it represents this. Now, we could see that the price itself is hitting new high each time. But let's look at the indicator. Now, a very healthy uptrend, the peak of every indicator should also move up as well. So if this chart is that the indicator is also each peak is a higher peak than the previous, this represents that it's of good strength. The market demonstrate to me that it is still going up because it's building from strength to strength. And I'm viewing that the strength is there as it moves up. But however, now you could see that as of 31st March, I captured even today is still the same. Nothing has changed. The pick has been a lower pick. Now, this is what I call a divergence, market divergence. Now, still remember what I said earlier about behavior analysis. It tell us why the market moved the way it is today. So how I analyze the chart using behavior analysis is that using indicator and price is that as the price are moving higher, but you still remember how it define indicator, it measures the strength of the price. So in this case, the measurement of the strength of the price is telling me that although it's hitting new roof, but the strength is getting weaker by the day. So now I would suggest to sell anytime now. It's just telling me this. Now, this understanding is just telling me this, that the market is, we have to be very cautious because the market may not be as strong as we think that it is right now. 
many of us say that while well, Biden have thrown in trillions of US dollars in the financial market, the market will go up. Yes, it's true, but the underlying strength is representing to me that there's a divergent, that the strength is not as strong as it appeared to be. Now that's called technical analysis. So I hope that you get some insight. So basically, if I look at NASDAQ, S&P, Dow Jones, it have not shown me this demonstration yet. But when I study into the Russell, which is a 2000 smaller size company in the US market, the listed US market, it is indicating to me that there's some weakness going on. Now, how am I maneuvering the uh, US market today is that um, it's still on uptrend, but recognizing that it seems that Russell is taking the lead in, in this weakening uptrend, seems to me that Russell is taking the lead. I have to be very cautious about the uptrend in the coming days, weeks, and months because of the this rush, Russell's analysis. Okay, I'm just going to move on very quickly. Now, basically, how to understand Russell is that, like what I say, there's four micro e-mini index, uh, US index futures. So now how you understand every index is, is it, it worth a lot of, uh, it's, it's very meaningful to me. So basically to understand the index futures, first, you have to understand one thing, which is how much is the worth of one point. Now, the contract specs states that one point is worth five US dollars, okay? So it's other rest, you can see it's, it's a different creature completely. Um, so now, if today Russell is at 2,300, say for example, you see there's a case of view that you want to buy into Russell right now, or even to sell short the Russell at 2,003, what does it mean? Now, since one point is five US, if I'm going to buy at 2,003, it means that five US dollars times 2,003, it represents 11,500. It also means that I'm participating, I'm buying into 2,000 companies, US listed company worth at this point in time, worth 11,500. This is what it means. So it's very meaningful, very meaty to me. <coughs> okay, this is what we cover in part one. Um, we, I specifically say that before we plan for a trade, before we trigger that trade, whether it's a buy or sell short, we have to know very clearly. Uh, of course, there's a reason why it triggered a trade. We must have some view, right? But before we trigger the trade, confirm the trade done, we have to start planning. Is it for short-term trading or is it for intraday trading? Okay. Now, short-term trading, it means that I have a view now. I'm going to make a purchase or sell short. But I'm not going to hold it for more than three months. It's between two days to three months. That's what we explained the part one. And uh, tonight, I'm going to explain the trading strategy for short-term trading and also the trading strategy for intraday traders as well. So intraday trading, obviously, it means that you only have a view within the day until 4 a.m. the market close, and that's it. I have no view to carry this position overnight. Okay, so that's what we study about uh, the part one. But tonight we're going to dwell into this too about on the trading strategy itself between short term trader and in that intraday trader. Short term trader means that I have a mandate, I have a view to hold this position between two days to three months. And intraday is within the day itself. So, okay, we're going to move on. Uh, okay, just want to also um, share my excitement that I just received a news from CME Group that they are going to launch a new contract called the Micro Bitcoin Futures. And basically, Micro Bitcoin Futures is about 50 times smaller than the regular Bitcoin Futures. Um, I'm all excited about it. Now, you have to understand that um, I'm together with a lot of expert panelists view that I do not hold any view on investing into micro or uh, into Bitcoin. <laughs> investing in Bitcoin, I felt that is very senseless at my personal opinion, and I do not know how to equate the prices. But you have to understand that uh, Bitcoin futures is a different creature. It's more for traders. Traders, just like I explained, is between two days to three months or intraday trader. So I do struggle when I want to trade with uh, Bitcoin. Uh, when I want to trade Bitcoin means that I want to trade below three months period. I couldn't find much of a platform, which I'm very thankful that uh, on the 3rd of May, they're going to launch this micro Bitcoin futures. It's meant for trader, it's not for investor. It also meant for hedger. I also do some hedging as well. Means that in the event I see that the Bitcoin is going to fall, I may want to do a sell short as well. So I'm all excited about it. I told the uh, uh, my sponsor that 
um, I think it's going to be a hit on 3rd May because in this environment, I do struggle to trade the Bitcoin. Trade huh? means that below three months. It's not for investment. Okay, let's move on. And let's go into the trading strategy of this profile called short-term trader. The trading strategy for short-term trader is this. Now, um, that's how I trade. And I just want to share with you how I plan my trade, how I think, how I plan, how I analyze a trade. Now, even as a short-term trader, remember short-term trading, your profile is you hold a position between about two days to about three months. Now, even as a short-term trader, I have to understand where is the trend right now because it's going to help me tremendously. Now, say for example, I'm just going to showcase one example on the uptrend. If you view that current market, the US indices is on the uptrend. So being a short-term trader, you do your best. You do your best to buy on dips because the trend is in favor for you to buy on dips. So you just have to remember that if you recognize that the current trend for the US indices is uptrend, as a short-term trader, you do your best to buy on dips. Now, this is how it works. This is the uptrend. And how I buy on dips is that every time, say, for the next few days or next few weeks, you could see that it always happened that the market of some bad news is start coming down. Now, recognizing that the US market, even today, Although just now I talk about the divergence of the Russell, but the point is just a warning. But I have to recognize that it is still an uptrend. How I do being a short-term trader is that I will still buy on dips. I will still look for opportunity to buy on dips, something like this. Okay. Now, every time the market fall for the next few days, next few weeks, or maybe stretch to a one, one, one or two months, I'll be looking out for opportunity to buy on dips because I recognize that the whole US stock index, it is still an uptrend. So what are the things that I'll be looking out for? I'll be looking out for uh, um, formation like uh, a hammer. Of course, it's not just technical. We study into the market psychology or the behavior analysis of hammer. So I think I'm, I'm very, uh, I would say I'm famous for, but people know me that I look out for, I hunt for those candle, uh, candlestick or hammer that carries high weighting. I hunt for those, okay? And you can achieve that later. I'm going to share with you and a uh, video is free. You can view it after this program. How to hunt for those hammer that carries high weighting that Because when you look at a chart, there's a lot of hammer all over the shop, but you should be very selective to select the hammer with higher weighting. Then you go for it, okay? So this one strategy here is that even as a short-term trader, you have to understand the trend. Now, if the trend is uptrend, you try your best to buy, to wait for dip to come. And when a, a hammer like this with high weighting surface, then you can start to get into the market and, and expect for the, for the best with a measured risk. Because we're trading, we're not investing. So you have to understand that as long as you're trading, always have a measured risk. Okay, so earlier I talked about how to identify those hammer with high weighting. So this is a program that you may want to uh, log into. Uh, you can QR code scan, it's free. I did it with the organizer as well and I recorded it. So I thought that the program went so well and a lot of them, them like it. They are so thankful that they finally know how to identify what are the hammer that they should select. Okay, So after this program, I think it's still early at 8 o'clock, you may want to jump into this program called Identified Market Reversal. Just going to hang on with you for the next three seconds. You can do a screen capture, but please don't watch it now. Uh, I only have the next half an hour with you. Okay. Now, so then you may ask me, so Kon Hao, in the uptrend, can we not sell? It means that can we sell? Of course you can, but you have to recognize that on the uptrend that um, these are retracement. Usually it's quite short. Now, whenever you see an inverted hammer with high weighting inverted hammer, it means that we don't look for, uh, we, we are not casual about looking for inverted hammer, but we have to source for those inverted hammer that has high weighting. Now you have to understand that if you find that there's a sell short opportunity against the trend, but make sure you hold your sell short short it means that the next few days to next few weeks you've got to be very cautious because you have to recognize that you are going against the trend so you if you want to sell short go ahead and uptrend but make sure you keep it really really short term okay so now i just want to uh give you some idea even about 
something about bigger picture here. And later I'm going to bring you a point here how I, I manage this. Uh, why I say that I'm very cautious when I study into Russell. You give me some clue that the U.S. market there's some divergent going on on, and it seems like Russell Russell today is taking the lead on this idea uh, among Nasdaq, Dow Jones, and S and P. Okay. Now, so a lot of my friends say that hey, Conho, don't worry. Uh, look at uh, the last 100 years in the U.S. history, stock market history, it has been going up. So even I'm stuck now, it's okay. You should bounce up. You should go up. You say over the, they say over the last 100 years, U.S. market has been going up, up. And I disagree with them. I say no. Look at this. The last, the market, U.S. market have not been going up the last 100 years. If you look at 1910 to 1980. U.S. market is still at 2005. Okay. The U.S. market has been only been going up since 1980 until today. So it's about 41 years. Now this is a not a is a non-linear chart. It means that it measures the percentage movement. And I just want to appreciate the volatility before 1980 until today. So basically, from 1980 until today, the rate of change is quite smooth. But uh, we've been seeing uh, uptrends for the last 41 years. So now. Um, so what happened here is that I want to understand this uh, market, they are cycle. Okay? At the moment, US market is still on this uptrend. Now let's study the last cycle. The last cycle started after the Great Depression. And you could see that a very nice cycle lasted for about uh, 45 years. And I also want to study into the a correction, uh, market correction. This was about 70%. And this Great Depression was 89%. So what we what we witnessed in 2008, the Lehman crisis, it was about uh, 50%. So it's nowhere close to about 70% or 90%. I would say that over the last 41 years, uh, these are just market taking a breather, including the pandemic, market is also taking a breather. So I recognize that if we study into history, a correction is, is at least about more than 50% to about 70%, and that's called correction. Now, I just want to look at the recent cycle, which lasted for 41 years. And then I got to ask myself where we are today. Yeah, I'm getting there very quickly, okay? Just bear with me, where we are today. And I have to tell you this, that as a short-term trader, we are still on the uptrend. But as an investor in the US market, I am very cautious right now, okay? I'm very cautious, but trading-wise, I think it's still on the uptrend. Uh, it's not getting any weaker yet. But Russell is giving me some clue. So for the next few weeks to next few months, I got to uh, I got to be I got to eyeball like a hawk. <laughs> so any changes, I have to act very quickly. Now, so we understand this logic. Just imagine that this major cycle was lasted for 41 years already, right? Now, if I were to place a thought, let's say this is a 40 years time frame for U.S. market as we have studied. Now, I need to understand, even as a short-term trader, I need to understand when to hedge and when to trade. Okay? So as of now, again, US market, I analyze that it is still on the uptrend. So basically, as a short-term trader, you buy into dips. Okay? Simple as that. Now, if I were to uh, give a, an analytical view about the US market, I would say that the trend is still uptrend. So therefore, as a short-term trader, you buy on dips because the trend is still uptrend. Now, why I say the risk is very high? Now, the risk is high because I do not want myself to get a position stuck. Being a short-term trader became a long-term investor because once the market starts to turn, I do not want my position to get stuck. So therefore, I rank or I rate the U.S. indices as risk is high. Okay, so we, we agree with this point, right? But is the U.S. indices volatile? It is very volatile. Now, again, at the beginning of the program, I did say that volatility is good. I say being a trader, I look out for two things. If you still remember that, number one is that it must have liquidity. And number two, it must have it must be volatile. Because when there's volatility, there is opportunity. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how it works. I just want to give you the structure, how to plan for a trade, being a short-term trader. Okay, if I'm going to place a dot over the last 40 years, 41 years, where we place the US market, I think our place around here is not the high yet, but maybe it's close to it. I, I do not know exactly. Okay. Now, so of course, in every trend, there's an inner trend. 
let's say for example, we know that there's inner trend, but since we are in the uptrend of another major uptrend, so there's a trend. Now, every time when the market took a dip, as a short-term trader, recognizing that it is still an uptrend, I will always look for buy on dips opportunity. Now, just sharing with you this because most of the traders, I felt that they tired themselves out very easily because they trade all over the shop. Uh, one moment they're buying, the next moment they're selling. And after that, they got lost. They lost some money and they get very tired. So um, maybe I'm of a different creature. My personality is different, but I tend to want to recognize the trade, trend and buy on dips. It's much easier the ways. It's so, so relaxed and so much more fun. <laughs> okay, so, so basically we recognize that in a super major trend, there's inner trend. So every time the inner cycle, we look, every time the market starts to dip, um, don't get too frightened by the market or the news, but you just continue to look for buy on dips opportunity. Focus on the hammer that has waiting. So of this program, I will, reckon, uh, I will recommend that you visit that one hour program. Okay, that program is free. Now, so I also have this chat group. Uh, later I'll share with you how you can get into this chat group as well. So every week I will post a case study. So now you now you recognize to identify certain hammer or certain uh, behavior, market psychology of the market. Now this is what I did, and over the years I'm be very constant with my trading strategy, and I enjoy sharing anyway. Now I say that to my this chat group uh, in Telegram chat group. I say that that, that was posted on 26th of March 2021. But I derived this view on the 27th of Feb. I have an interview over the media. So I say that, I, I say this, I posted this on the 6th of March. I say that the US market was still moving south. That means it, it kind of came off. Uh, end of February to the beginning of March, the markets came off quite badly. Okay, So a lot of people are very frightened. But I kind of uh, want to comfort those traders. I say that there's opportunity around here is that it's still moving south. But I analyze that the main trend is still up. That's what we studied earlier. Therefore, I view the market as a retracement. It's not a correction, it's a retracement and looking out to buy on dips with a measured risk. That's why I say. Now, I, again, in the same messaging with the chart, I say that the following case study demonstrate the biting point on buy on dips. So we studied that earlier. And this case study will be suited for those who short-term trader. Now, short-term trader, how I classify them is those that hold a position between two days for three months as I study into the 16 minutes chart very recently. Now, I'm just going to zoom in into what I presented on 6th of March uh, or before that, 27th of February. Now, you could see that in uh, now we, we all have, we're just, we're just part of the human race here is that we all have very short term memory. But I can tell you that in end of Feb to March, the drop was pretty scary and a lot of people got freaked out. Most traders got freaked out. Freak out. But I told that, that hey, you, you have to remember we are still part of this uptrend and these are just retracement. It's not a correction, so don't get freaked out. So constantly look for constantly look for buying opportunity. And we recognize here as a bullish engulfing body. And we also recognize here as a hammer that has waiting. Now, there's a lot of hammer all over the shop, but please pick the right one, okay? So um, this hammer that carries waiting, then subsequently, uh, these are the uh, bullish engulfing body that we saw and hammer that we saw and then that was on the 30th of March, and today Dow Jones is at 33,300, about there. So it's much higher. But I just want to point out uh, one thing to you here is that how we plan or how I encourage my uh, traders or my participants to, uh, or my follower to, to plan their trade is this. Uh, if you plan that you're a short-term trader, now recognize that uh, we spotted this view by on dips on the 6th of March. Now, up to today, how long is it? It's about a month. Okay, and you should still hold on to this position as well, or at least partial the position. Along the way, of course, you can take some profit. So uh, one month have passed. Is it fulfilled the part of the plan, the trading plan for being a short-term trader? The answer is definitely a yes. Okay, so getting in, but let me just recap here is that identify the trend. If you're a short-term trader, always remember what's the trend. If the trend is uptrend, then your focus should be buy on dips. How to buy on dips? You look for those hammer, with high weighting. <clears throat> then how, how long should you hold? Between about two days to, to one month or three months, it really depends on what can the market offer us from then and then. <clears throat> okay, now this is very interesting here. Now earlier I demonstrated the day uh, 60 minutes chart, right? But let's look at the daily chart. 
Now in daily chart, you could literally see the uptrend here. Okay, I just I'll trace this over. You could literally see the uptrend here. So during the end of Feb to the beginning of March, market came off quite badly. So a lot of investors and traders, they kind of uh, got this illusion. But on the 6th of March, we are very focused, continue to buy on this because we're still part of the major uptrend. So you see the point here? Yeah, so kind of this chart kind of conclude whatever I just spoken about, that how we plan for a trade and how I would advocate that you should plan for a trade as such as well. Okay, I'm going to move on uh, to uh, intraday trading very quickly because I already explained that uh, the last on the part one. And while explaining, there will be a Q&A. Please submit your questions soon. Uh, don't wait until I open up the Q&A. Then uh, uh, Min Hui over there will collate the question and, and she will ask me the question. Now, intraday trading is this very simple. I'm still going to dwell into Russell. So basically 1.5 US dollars. Now, how to do intraday trading? The whole idea is this. Now, you know, as a big intraday trader, that means once you plan, you stick to it. That means I have no view for tomorrow. It's just uh, today because the market is very volatile. And I say that volatility is good for traders because volatility, volatility created uh, uh, extreme movement, which I like, which I like it a lot. It, it created greed and fear. We have no time to explain to you how it works. But anyway, uh, the part one, we explain about the market dynamics. Now, we have to recognize that in March and April, the dynamics compared to uh, last year is a bit different. Now, what do I mean by market dynamics? So basically, I just measured uh, March and April. The typical daily movement is about 110 points. And last, uh, beginning of this year, the market movement was just about 55 points. So market is not that volatile then, but today market is very volatile, including Perhaps I think tonight market will remain a small town. Now the trick is this, to take profit in the intraday trader, it really depends on the current market dynamics. At the moment, based on this study, based on this behavior analysis, based on this study, it tells me that the daily average movement is about 110. Now being an intraday trader, we have to be realistic in how we take our profit. Now I would say that if I were to able to capture about 20% of the average daily movement, I'll be very happy. I'm not going to catch 110. 110 point means that I'm very unrealistic. I'm, I'm trying to buy the low sell at a high. That's not realistic, right? But based on the current market dynamic, I think to capture 20% of the current range, 110, 20% means 22 points, I think it's realistic, but provided you're skillful with your entry level, okay? Now, so as of March and April, not much different in market dynamics, about 110 points every single day. And 20% is about 22 points. Now, this is a 15 minutes chart. Now, I want you to see 15 minutes chart on the topic of intraday trading here. Okay? Now, it means that you have no idea to carry position overnight. So basically, the day started about on the 30th of uh, March. Okay, They started here at 12 midnight. These are Singapore timing, 12 noon, 6 p.m. And these are the night time. Night time is active. And basically, close about 4 or 5 o'clock and close here. And these are the next day. Now, could you... 15 minutes, I'm going to give you a few seconds to identify uh, where is uh, the hammer that's interesting to you within this intraday. It means that by 4 p.m. or 5, I need to get out. Could you recognize right now that where is the opportunity? Okay, so even intraday trader, I do the same thing as well. I try to buy on dips. I try to buy on dips because the, the major uptrend is on the uptrend. Okay, now you can see that you're right. Okay, there is this hammer. A hammer that carries waiting, and those that want to learn what the hammers that carry waiting, please go and visit the uh, topic about market reversal. Okay, where I will flash that again if you, in case you miss it earlier. Now, so basically, is this: if you get in at two one six zero about here, okay, but first you have to be very skillful in getting in. Okay, watch the video. I think you'll be quite skillful to get in by then. Okay, watch the video. So once again at 2160, that means after this you get at 2160. Remember how are you going to target for a profit? 22 points, right? And you have no idea how the market will be for the next day because you position yourself as an intraday trader. It means I get in, by end of the day, 22 points, I just want to get out. And to fulfill that, <laughs> 22 points, you got out. So we just, um, for intraday trader, you have to understand how we manage that is that less is more. It means that collectively, we just want to collect. But each time when we make a mistake, we just get out. It's also very small 
risk also. But we have to skillful, be very skillful to get into the market. That's all I have to advise you. But during the Q&A, we can discuss about it more. And before I go to Q&A, please uh, start to submit your question. Let me just uh, give you some administration work because uh, the organizer last year, I did that. I have this uh, trade challenge. It means that after this uh, program you attended, uh, I will continue to recognize with you the Hamel and inverse Hamel or the candlestick that has high weighting. Um, for this round, they wanted me to do that as well. Then I'll email to you, okay? So last round, we have total for the whole month. I think that was in January or Feb. We spotted about 10 good trades and seven have came to pass. Uh, three failed, but that's okay because it's a measured risk. So the organizer say, asked me if I could do the same as well to the participant tonight. I said, sure. Okay. So now this was what I did. Um, that means every week I try to showcase you one potential move, potential reversal. Now I can be wrong, but I just want to show you that it can be done and you can do that as well. If I can do it, you can do it. Okay. By the way, I didn't study financial in my university. Okay. So <laughs> I'm an engineering student. Now, if I can do it, you can do it as well. Okay, so what I did then was on the 20th of Jan, I got to email you all this uh, potential move uh, to you for the whole entire month of April, uh, at least once a week. If I have more, I will give you more. Now, I say that on the 60 minutes chart study shown that it's a potential reversal from the morning high, state your reason on the crude oil, okay, the dynamic crude oil. So what, was, what we saw was a very um, high-weighted inverse hammer, and that's what I challenged the participant to think. Do you think it's possible? Okay, if you short here, put a measured risk here, do you think it's possible? So they think, they discuss about it. Then subsequently, uh, it really came to pass is that uh, this was the day itself. And subsequently, this is daily chart. Of course, you don't see the first hammer. Uh, that uh, but switch to daily chart, you could see that the market started to dip. Okay, my view, remember the short term trader is what's your view? It's between two days to three months, starting from here, one month, two months three months and this is exactly what i hope to see and also encompass some fundamental analysis because uh pandemic just kicked in around globally last year if you still remember so it kind of timed nicely with the behavioral finance or not behavior behavior analysis with fa so we can hold it for about three months but of course i never expect that you go below zero but of course in that situation the pandemic has spread all over united states and europe if you find that if you have a short position in crude oil, you want to roll it over for the June contract, you can always consult your broker to do so. So it was, these are the trades that I will be forwarding to you for the whole entire of April, at least once a week. Okay? If I can spot more, I will forward to you. But with disclaimer, these are all these views are for my personal consumption. So basically my whole idea is not to uh, ask you to trade, but I just, I hope that I can inspire you that if I can do it, you can do it as well. Okay. Now, uh, how to receive the uh, my email on this uh, trade challenge is that you can uh, take a picture if you could, then after that you apply for it. So you do a QR code scan if you're interested to receive this trade challenge for the whole entire month of April. At least I will forward you one case study every month. Uh, do this QR code scan, then uh, I know that you're interested, I will email to you. That also gives me a permission that to email to you because of the DNC uh, of PDPA. Um, okay, once I receive your request, I will also forward the slide, the deck to you tonight as well. Okay, including what uh, the CME product that I also will include that as well to forward to you. For those that uh, please take a picture if you have not, I'm going to count to three, three, two, one. Going to move on to the next slide. Now, so if I miss out the uh, identify market reversal, you can, um, for those that join us much later, I have this one hour program with the organizer as well, that uh, we identified the hammer that has high weighting. So after this program, we finish at eight, please remember to hop on to this program, it's recorded. You can view it and from there, you'll know how to identify what are the hammer that has high weighting. So after that, you find that you want more, uh, is there something can learn more so that you can, uh, take, you can take advantage of the current market volatility Yes, you can join me for the next program. Uh, I will talk a lot about BA and TA, technical analysis and behavioral analysis. So this is a program called Timing the Market. Uh, I spent a lot of time to work this out and it's been in the market for, uh, in the past was a physical class, 
But this year I converted to online. It was very well received. And I hope they can join me. Call the title is called Timing the Market. In this QR code, you'll find that. So basically, I'm going to drill into much deeper on not just TA, but BA. How to, uh, it's, a, it's a third level of uh, identify market reversal. We're not just going to study one price or one hammer because sometimes the market may not be so straightforward. We're going to study into a cluster of prices or cluster of candlestick development and or its volume. Sometimes we're lucky enough, we saw one hammer, nice volume, that's good. But market is much more complex than we think. Sometimes it may form in a cluster of hammer or candlestick that we just have to read into it. So I'm going to um, dwell into how to do that. And after that, these are e-learning. What I do is that I will have this weekly case study and the participant love it because uh, the e-learning, they can view it again and again. After that, every week, they'll look out for my case study. Then they can practice their skill. If something that they do not understand, they will revise back to the e-learning platform again. They revise that again, then they'll wait for next week for my case study. So I'm just going to give them case study and they just enjoy it. And usually, um, I don't give discount. You know that for those that follow me, I do not give discount for my program. Uh, but first of all, this program, I want to make it available for most of the retail investor or traders. Uh, I did not price it very high. I price it at a very affordable rate. Um, but usually for partnering event like this, I think I should give, give discount. And also, I will also give discount to two category of people. They invited once and also my partner partners. Okay, So the organizer, they're my partners. So if you could, uh, what you could do is that after you finish uh, the market reversal studies, you could uh, visit this course this curriculum go through the curriculum go through the whole curriculum if it makes sense to you you want to move on to the third or fourth gear in this program just go ahead to subscribe and there's a discount a 20 percent discount so you can key in this uh, coupon code 06 apr 21 which is today's date is in caps lock okay key in this coupon code you'll receive a 20 percent discount for this program so it's a lifelong learning program and then there's a weekly case study. You can have it perpetually. Then you can revisit the e-learning. So I just felt that I just started this year, but many of them have benefited because they really learn. So in the past, there's no way I can assure the learning journey because after the class, they say it's good, but I'm not too sure whether are they learning or not. Okay, this one, the whole group, they have a, a good chat and I'm very strict about it. There's no minor chat. It's all about business. It's all about market. So, uh, yeah, go ahead and visit that. So with that, we left with uh, the next five or 10 minutes. I would like to open up this Q&A. And okay, last information that I have here is that uh, do follow my or like my Facebook page. Uh, my Facebook page, the name is Con Hao, my name, joined together. Uh, every day, I'll read news. And I'll summarize news. I'll give my opinion. And sometimes I will also publish charts that have potential reversal as well, okay? So uh, if you could uh, go and like on how, so when I publish a news, you will receive it also. These are the rest of the information. And with that, we'll just go to the Q&A right now. And um, if there's any questions, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Kon Hao. Moving right on to the Q&A segment. Uh, someone from the audience would like to know the time frames you use and recommend for short term and intraday trading the S&P and NASDAQ indices. Okay, very good question here, but let me just cover the uh, uh, intraday trading first. Now, intraday trading, I will look out for uh, five, 15 minutes. Um, and also sometimes we'll play around with 60 minutes and daily chart as well. It just, when I play around 60 minutes and daily chart, it just give me a sense of where is the main trend. Remember just now we studied about identify the trend, trend first, right? You play around with different time frame. And after that, I'll zoom into say five or 15 minutes to get into a precision entry. So when I study into 60 minutes or daily chart or intraday, it's just to give me an idea where's the trend right now. Then after that, I zoom into 15 or five minutes will give me the precision entry. Okay, so good question. Then as for short-term trading, so I will even look at monthly or weekly chart. Remember just now the 110 years old chart? That was maybe a yearly chart. I do not know. But we look at the long term just to get an idea of where's the trend right now. Then after that, when we plan for short-term trading strategy, I may drill down into daily to hourly chart. 
just to form some idea to have a position overnight? I think it's an excellent question. Thank you so much. Yep. And any other question for the next one? Yep. Um, the next question is, you were showing the 15-minute chart just now. What about the five-minute or one-minute charts? Yes, I think I think it's very related to earlier the question. Like what I say, we will always play around with different charts. For example, you know, sometimes when the market is not volatile, yeah, earlier I said about there are two rules when how we select the market, whether it's tradable or not, there are two rules. That's my personal rule anyway. It must be volatile and must have must be liquidity. And the good news is that all these four US indices have high liquidity. But volatility is really subjective. It really depends on the market then and then. What if during this period the market is not volatile? Then if you look at one minute chart, it doesn't speak much to me because the market don't move. But it could be a time and period that this period is very volatile. When you can look at one minute chart, the market is volatile. You could see meaningful hammer, meaningful invert, inverted hammer. So it really depends on the market whether I want to use one minute or not. Because during that market dynamic, that time and season, that one minute, that market is not volatile. So I will not use that one minute. But if, say today, one minute is very meaningful because through one minute you can see very meaningful formation of hammer, uh, engulfing body, all this and that. Then go ahead to use one minute. So these are very subjective. Okay, maybe the next question. All right. The next question is: Do you set stop loss for intraday and short term trading? Definitely. So earlier I said that uh, as an investor. I may not have stop loss because when we invest, we're buying into a intrinsic value. Now, usually as an investor, I will commit myself to keep investing until the market go up. Okay. And I have no stop loss as an investor because the, we can calculate the intrinsic value. But swing over to the other side as a trader, I'm very, I'm very clear. I've divided into this quadrant, the four quadrant. As a trader, I'm just participating in the market volatility. I may not have a view on the long term. So every time when I trade, I have will have to have a measured risk. That means every time I'll, I'll do my best, you should do your best to get into the market at best that seeing the market will perform. But what if the market do not perform? Because we are not long-term investor, we are short-term trader. So we are just expect that within the next two days to three months, market will perform. Now, what if the market do not perform? Then you have to do the exit plan. Simple as that. Yeah, maybe I should just uh, also showcase the last segment about measured risk and before we close the program tonight. And uh, let me just to touch on, uh, maybe I just borrow about five minutes of the time. We'll look at the live uh, case study here. I can get live chart up. Let me see if I know how to use this program here. Um, early I could, but now I'm a bit lost. So oh, I wanted to get a live chart up. Okay, anyway, let me just show, show, showcase with you about stop loss, which is to me is that's very important. Now, how to create a stop loss is this. Let me just get back to um, to this one. Okay, yeah. Now, we could see that at this point in time, 2160, okay, is my entry point because why we have seen a hammer that surface with high weighting. So let's get in and target 22 points. Now, what if you're wrong? How should you manage your risk? Very simple, because why I buy? Because I bought here is because I believe that the low has been established. Now, this statement is very important. Why I buy is because I believe that the low has been established, therefore I bought into it at 2160. So in the event that market do not go up, I did not clear at 22 points, the market come down. Now, how will I have to plan my stop? I bought in at 2160. This is about 2140. 6040 is also 20 points. And what's my stop loss? What's my damage here is that it's 20 times 5 is 20 times 5. How much is it? Yeah, so you will know the amount. 20 times 5. So these are the amount that I prepared to lose. So every time I can tell that every time we enter, we have to do our best that we expect for the work best, but we also plan for the worst as well. Okay. So the whole idea about trading is that. You have to be very skillful. You collectively collect all the small earnings. In the same time, when you are wrong, you also risk the small losses as well. This is very important. But you try your best to be as skillful as you can. You collectively collect 
more small earnings and lesser losses and just amalgamate your performance and over time you'll make perfect sense to definitely make a lot of perfect sense to me and i hope you make a lot of perfect sense to you okay i just want to really encourage you if you could um participate in this program it's a lifelong learning program and these are the coupon rate and i forgot to mention one thing that's expiry date though it will expire tomorrow at 12 noon so with that thank you so much for staying through the last one hour and also want to thank you the sponsor thank you all right thank you very much for the insights tonight Kon Hao, and thank you very much everybody for your time tuning into this webinar tonight we'll be sending everyone a link to today's webinar so you can watch it again if you'd like to that's all for today thank you everyone and goodbye